Hey guys, about a year ago I got this Harman Kardon AVR 3700 off of eBay for about 80 bucks. And the issue it has is when you turn it on, it stays on for about 14 seconds. After that, it just shuts right back down. So the reasoning behind this is inside on the switch mode power supply, there are two ceramic disc capacitors and they're underrated so after continued use they heat up and eventually they fail in short circuit shorting out the MOSFETs and as uh, you can about imagine without the main power supply the amplifier won't work so the receiver detects this and shuts down I'm going to go ahead and show you how to repair this. Real quick, before I take it off, I'm going to go ahead and show you what the receiver actually does. I almost forgot, but uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. Alright, we have power. No volume control yet. Okay, now we have volume control, and it shut back down. So, let's go ahead and remove the top cover. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Unlike most other receivers, this one has a switch mode power supply. Uh, other receivers use a uh, transformer, typically. Um, looks like Harman Kardon's first go at a switch mode power supply wasn't quite a success. So down in here, next to this heat sink, there's two MOSFETs and there are also two capacitors. It's quite a pain to get them out, but uh, I'll go ahead and shut off and unplug this power supply. And I'll pull it out and I'll be right back once again. I just want to advise you that uh, you're doing this repair at your own risk. There are two very large capacitors in here that if they are not completely discharged, they can shock you, and they probably won't kill you, but if they do, um, just wanted to notify you, that way I'm not at risk. Also, there are s screws here, and here, as well as here, here, and down in there that need to be removed before you can get the power supply out. Also, there is a screw here and here. You will remove this metal tab that is holding the power supply in place. All right, I've got the screws removed as well as the metal tab. Now, there are a few wires you need to unplug first before the power supply will come out. And that those wires are here. There's a little plug here with a tab. You just press it on the tab down there, pull the wire out. Same thing over here, as well as here. This is the power output to the amplifier. And in the front here, got this connector. You've got this connector and the one next to it as well as this connector here now this one's wound around it so you'll have to unwind it pull it through here and uh, then you can remove the power supply Turns out you do not 
just leave that one in place. Okay, power output to the amplifier is unplugged. Now, once again, be really careful. This is the high voltage area. Don't want to touch the wrong thing. This switch actually has two plugs. One of them was back here, and then the other one here I didn't show you. And then there's the connector for the main power in, right there. Okay. Let me go ahead and pull this out. I'm gonna lift up from this side. Gently move it this way and up and out the side just like that. It's best to handle this by the sides that way you don't touch any of the contacts on the bottom of this PCB. Now, uh, let's see if I can give you a close-up of where those capacitors are going to be. Okay, here you can kind of see one right down in there. And uh, you can't really see it on camera, but it's more of a greenish color rather than a blue. It should be blue. And then there is another one down in front of this MOSFET, but the camera won't quite pick it up. I'm going to go ahead and show you real quick that these capacitors are charged up and they are pretty deadly. So if I put my probe here on one and the red one on the positive, you can see that this capacitor still has 106, almost 107 volts in it. If I go across the other one, see it's already discharged. Before I handle this power supply anymore, I'm going to go ahead and uh, discharge that capacitor. That way it's good and safe to handle. Now, uh, you can use a ceramic resistor. Um, this one is 10K, 5 watts. You could also use a 10 watt, 1K. Um, that way you want to have a uh, pretty high wattage, that way the resistor doesn't just combust into flames when you uh, discharge it. And then for maximum safety, go ahead and hold it with pliers. And then bend this so they go right across the terminals here. And you might see a small spark, but uh, hold it there for a few seconds. And that'll let you know that it's good and discharged. Okay. You go ahead and do the other one. Alright. I'm going to measure the voltage again. got about uh, 17 volts and uh, that's probably good enough to handle it's not gonna hurt you so uh, I'll go ahead and continue now all right I went ahead and I sucked that heat sink out of there and uh, now we can get a better look at those capacitors so if we bring this up here real close and I bend back these MOSFETs right here. Oh, that wire's in the way. 
right about here you can see that blue ceramic disc capacitor and yeah you can kind of see it's green there on the top half but blue down by the legs and that would pretty much indicate that, that one's failed similar story with this one over here not quite as bad but uh, certainly there's something going on there let's go ahead and do a continuity check across the legs of that capacitor over here we'll flip the board over and uh, let's see that should be right here see that little capacitor symbol there Okay, let's probe that, and look at that, short circuit. Wow, it went away. Alright, let's check this one. Nothing on this guy. So somehow that guy still survived. got those capacitors out of there and uh, it's very difficult to see but the one on the left here it's even got a little hairline fracture let's see if I can get a good view on that very difficult to see but it is there so um, you can definitely see the discoloration more on the one on the left but it is there on both so these are also rated for one kilovolt uh, there in the right lighting you can kind of see it one kilovolt i'm going to go ahead and replace these with some identical 471 capacitors that's their value and uh Actually, I'm not going to do identical. I'm going to replace them with 2 kilovolt 471 capacitors. Here's that other one. There you go. You can see the crack. Very small. And uh, I'll replace those. Actually, I'll grab them real quick so you can see them. And then I'll replace them. And we'll power this guy up and see how it runs. All right, here's those capacitors. As you can see, I kind of uh, I planned ahead. I knew this repair was probably going to come. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use these two here in the middle. Just because they're identical and they're smaller than most of the others here. As you can see there, they're rated for 2 kilovolts, so they'll get the job done and should keep it alive much, much longer um, than the other two capacitors, if not pretty much forever, or until something else, else fails. So let me pull them out of here. And there 
there's the other one. Alright, I got those new capacitors in there and it's looking much better, much cleaner now. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and take these guys and uh, let's put them where they belong. Okay, now that they're where we, uh, they belong, let's go ahead and put the heat sink on. Bend these MOSFETs up, back where they were, and sorry about the fingers, they keep getting in the way. I'll just place that back on there, solder it back in. And we'll test it. One more note, make sure you wipe off the surfaces with some alcohol. Don't want to leave fingerprints. Uh, also, the flux from the solder uh, can gunk up on the terminals and uh, can cause corrosion. Um, I, I like to use Unisolve uh, removal wipes. It works much better than just plain alcohol. Um, but, uh, see here, I haven't done it thoroughly enough yet, but it did take off quite a bit of the gunk. Alright, I've got my MOSFETs, or, yeah, the heatsink back on the MOSFETs, and, uh, soldered back into the board. Don't forget about the thermistor here for temperature sensing. I uh, wouldn't want the power supply thinking it were cold and then overheat um, and damage itself. Um, let's go ahead and put it back in the receiver and see if it works. Put the power supply back in. It's not screwed in. Um, this is just a test if it works. So let me plug it in and we'll turn it on. Now at this point it would have already shut back down, so the receiver is successfully repaired. If your receiver still doesn't work after this, then you might check the MOSFETs um, on the actual amplifier board. You could have a shorted MOSFET, and chances are if your MOSFETs have failed, then other transistors or resistors on that board have also failed. So you can look up um, on YouTube or Google how to repair a receiver amplifier and there's plenty of videos on that. It really isn't too difficult. It's more just time consuming. But uh, hopefully this video has helped you and uh, if it has give it a thumbs up and if not oh well give it a thumbs down, but uh, let me know if it helped you. Thanks, and uh, have a good day.